just of the six act its surface is covered with her from this pit and others like it scientists have taken the bones of thousands of animals trapped here over the past forty thousand years if you visit the la brea tar pits today you will see a number of small ponds of oily tar fenced to protect people and animals from falling in. The surface is constantly broken by bubbles as gas from deep underground works its way upward. During the dry season, when the surface water evaporates, the underlying black and sticky tar may be exposed to view. Pools may even dry out to be replaced by new pools nearby. How did the tar pits get here? The oily tar comes from deep beneath the surface. It wells up through cracks in the earth and then branches out into smaller cracks as it works its way upward. On the surface, it collects into pools. At the Los Angeles County Museum, skeletons taken from the tar pits are on display. Here one may see the skeleton of an American mastodon, an ancient elephant-like animal. The saber-toothed cat, a beast with great slashing teeth. The giant ground sloth, a huge, powerful, plant-eating animal. This box contains material just as it comes into the museum from the pits. The bones embedded in the dried tar will be carefully removed and cleaned. This scientist is examining bones taken from the tar pits. These bones have been cleaned. They are called fossils. Fossils are the remains of living things from past geologic times. When fossil bones come into a museum, a museum scientist sorts them according to the kind of animal they came from and according to the particular part of each animal. Leg bones in one box. Neck bones in another and so on. The fossil bones are carefully measured, labeled, and cataloged. From the shape and size of the leg bones of a giant ground sloth, this scientist will learn a great many things about the animal. How big it may have been, how high it may have stood, whether it walked upright or on all fours, and many other things. From fossil bones, it is sometimes possible to reconstruct an animal skeleton, learn a great deal about what it must have looked like, and from the kind of teeth it had, and the region in which its remains were found, even what it probably ate. This is the completed skeleton of an ancient wolf. It probably stood almost two and a half high. Its sharp pointed teeth prove it was a meat eater. This scientist is making a miniature reconstruction of the Rancho La Brea region as it may have looked 30 or perhaps 40,000 years ago. From a study of fossil bones, she is able to make accurate models of animals that no living person has ever seen. We are going to use her models 
to show you what the tar pits were probably like and how animals were probably trapped in them. Here is a tar pit in the Rancho La Brea region as it may have looked 30 or 40,000 years ago. This is one of a dozen or more pools that occurred in the center of a grassy plain. On this plain and in the nearby hills, a great many different kinds of animals had their homes. Here lived the imperial mammoth, a plant-eating animal related to a present-day elephant. It often grew to be 13 feet high, twice as high as the tallest man. Another animal that lived here was the teratornus, a great bird much bigger than a present-day eagle. The teratornus was a kind of vulture. It ate the remains of animals that were dead or dying, tearing its victims with its large hooked beak. When it opened its wings, they must have measured 11 to 12 feet from tip to tip. Here too lived the dire wolf, perhaps one of the largest wolves that ever lived. It often hunted in groups or packs. The dire wolf had a large, heavy head and very strong jaws. Another animal that was found here was the saber-toothed cat. As big as today's African lion, the saber-toothed cat was a strong and dangerous hunting animal. It takes its name from the two huge teeth that grew down from its upper jaw. A great many other kinds of animals lived on these grassy plains. A kind of camel lived here. This animal was similar in some respects to today's llama of South America, but it was much larger. It ate the grasses of the plain. One of the most interesting of these ancient animals, perhaps, was the giant ground sloth a strange, lumbering, plant-eating beast whose closest relative was the little tree sloth of Central and South America. The giant ground sloth was bigger than today's grizzly bear. Standing erect, it would have towered over a tall man. Other animals lived here in prehistoric times. Animals like the ancient bison, the great lion, and many smaller animals, like the skunk, the jackrabbit, and others. But how were the bones of these animals preserved in tar for us to find today? Perhaps a small antelope stepped into a pool of tar covered by dust and dirt. It was caught to be held forever. Or perhaps rain had covered a tar pool with water. An ancient bison may have stopped to get a drink. But as he stepped into the pool, he sank slowly into the tar. His struggles and cries as he tried to escape brought the saber-toothed cat to attack him. The saber-toothed, too, was caught, perhaps later, to be fed upon by the giant vulture-like teratornus. Over the centuries, tens of thousands of animals were trapped in these pits, piled one on top of the other underneath the tar. The soft parts of their bodies decayed, but their bones remained as fossils for man to find and study. The work of museum scientists has made it possible to accurately recreate the past in the models you have just seen. The museum has many old photographs showing how the fossil bones were originally dug up. This is a photograph of the tar pit region as it looked in 1913, the year excavations by the Los Angeles County Museum started. 
These men are excavating an ancient pit deposit of fossil bones embedded in tar-soaked sandy earth. This scientist is inspecting one of the deeper excavations. In this pit, a worker has uncovered the fossil bones of a mammoth, 30 feet below the surface. From 14 different sites, museum scientists have removed over half a million bones. Today on display at Rancho La Brea, in a specially constructed observation pit, one may see a typical block of tarry material with the bones in place, just as it was originally uncovered. This is part of the hip bone of a mastodon. This is the skull of a mastodon. Rancho La Brea is now a Los Angeles County Park. Visitors may view the pits, and behind the fences they may see life-sized models of tar pit animals recreated in concrete. Animals like the giant ground sloth and saber-tooth cats. Only the park guards are allowed behind the fences. The exciting death struggles at Rancho La Brea are no more. But the story of the tar pits is a living thing. For from the fossil bones found in the tar, scientists are continually learning many things about the past, deepening and extending our knowledge of life on Earth.